M16 introduced in 1964 is a fantastic rifle, but with a 20 inch barrel and a fixed stock, it wasn't ideal for close quarter combat and confined spaces. In 1991, the M4A1 was introduced to special operators and with it, a 14 and a half inch barrel and collapsible buttstock, making it a little bit handier in close quarters and in vehicles, even if it reduced the velocity and thus the range of the 223 round used by the M16 family. If you wanted something even more compact than that, the go-to 30 years ago was typically the famous MP5 submachine gun, a 9mm, which is of course less effective than the 223. But around the year 2000, the special operations community managed to make a reliable M4 with a 10-inch barrel if certain modifications were made to the gas operating system. With that, the Mark 18 CQBR, or Close Quarters Battle Rifle, was born, and it took the place, for the most part, of the 9mm submachine gun. As an example of the superiority of the Mark 18, a 223 round fired from a Mark 18 will drop around a foot and a half at 300 yards, but a 9mm projectile fired from an MP5 will drop nearly 10 feet over the same distance. Also, a study from the DOD, Department of Defense, indicated that 556 is actually just as effective as 308 on human targets inside of 50 yards. FYI, I've linked all of these reports in the description, so you can go down, read them if you want to, and you know I'm not pulling all of this out of my ass right now. There are a lot of authorities out there seeing M16 derivatives like the Mark 18 as obsolete, and piston-operated rifles are becoming the norm. A great example is the NGSW program and the subsequent adoption by the U.S. military of the MCX Spear, the SEALs using the HK416 for the past few years, and SOCOM adopting the MCX Rattler, all of them piston-operated guns. Piston-operated rifles have a well-deserved reputation for working well with a suppressor, slogging through fouling, dirt, dust, and abuse with more enthusiasm than the simple and lightweight direct impingement system used by the M16. After all, other nerds out there will remember the controversial 2007 Aberdeen dust test that pitted the M4 against three competing piston-operated designs, and the test allegedly showed that the M4 will have three to six times the stoppages as a piston-operated gun under the same sandy conditions, allegedly. It's generally accepted that piston-operated rifles do tend to be more reliable because they trap carbon fouling and they vent hot gases from large gas tubes over the barrel instead of directing that carbon and gas right back into the bolt carrier group, keeping the main operating components of a piston-operated gun cleaner and cooler than a DI gun. But despite their benefits, piston-operated guns are usually heavier, more expensive, they use more parts than direct impingement systems, and they often have greater felt recoil and lower accuracy than M16 descendants. Not all the time, though. Are piston guns worth the trade-off for greater reliability? To answer that, you have to ask, how reliable is the Mark 18 anyways? Let's say if you hypothetically fired 1,200 to 1,500 rounds through one, buried it in sand, tossed it around a little bit, but you had no malfunctions. Would you need something more reliable than that? I mean, fuck it. Let's say you did it all suppressed with a silencer only increasing the amount of fouling, back pressure, and gas coming back to the rifle. What would happen then? How long before this gun quits? That's what we do in today's video. A real Mark 18 in a special forces operator's hands would probably be made up of a hodgepodge of Colt, LMT, Daniel Defense, Knight's Armament parts. To try to get as close as possible to what would be currently used as a Mark 18, I got the new Daniel Defense R3 Mark 18. You guys know I love DD. SOCOM has most recently adopted the Daniel Defense RIS handguard and their 10.3 inch cold hammer forged barrels. And while Knights is cool because it's hard to find, even SOCOM is moving in the Daniel Defense direction. So if you're thinking about planning a Mark 18 build, the Mark 18 R3 upper that I'm using here is probably better and easier to find than anything else out there. We mated the DD R3 upper with a pretty beat up full auto Colt lower from an actual M4 to get what would be pretty much an identical copy of a real Mark 18. To up the ante, the gang at Silencer Shop sent me a silencer that was just adopted by the FBI, the Huxworks Flow 556K. Really excited to work with it. The Flow's a 
3D printed 17-4 stainless steel silencer. Claims to be full auto rated, uses flow through technology, which theoretically sends more gas downrange instead of upstream back into the rifle and towards the operator. So we put that to the test and I frankly set out to destroy the Flow 556 in this test. I mean, it's not my can, I don't really give a shit. They're really hard to get right now, but if you're looking for a Flow 556, then I would check out our guys at Silencer Shop. Homies at Ventura Munition sent me a thousand rounds of Wolf Gold to run through this gun as fast as possible and to help me with that task. I enlisted the Pensacola Police Department. PPD was kind enough to not only let me participate in their monthly SWAT drills with the Mark 18 in full auto, but they also helped me run an absolute brass train on this gun when training was over for the day, using their own ammo to burn the Mark 18 up in addition to mine. I didn't clean or lube this gun the entire time. So when did it fail? Obviously, running it a couple of hours on drills, no sweat for Mark 18. After maybe 250 to 350 rounds in semi-auto and full auto, we didn't have one problem. But when training was over, about a dozen SWAT officers stayed behind and waited in line with full magazines to dump one after the other, turning money into noise, getting some pics for the gram, whatever. We ran my thousand rounds of Wolf, plus the ammo the PPD guys shot through the gun, we lost count in total no less than 1,200 rounds. And Ryan and I guessed it was more likely around 1,500, somewhere between 40 and 50 mags worth. Surprisingly, the Mark 18 and the Flow 556 got after it, surviving mag after mag after mag. It didn't take long before we had to wear gloves just to hold the gun. Related to that, the suppressor got so hot that it burned my blue force gear sling attachment. It started a small grass fire that we didn't catch on camera and it burned through my glove and gave my thumb a pretty nasty blister when I accidentally touched the tube. The gun would even get too hot to hold even if you had gloves because it was radiating heat. Like you could feel it on your face when you held the gun up to shoot it. So we cooled the gas block area and suppressor down with water a couple of times. And some Red Bull once just in case the gun was getting a little sleepy. Incredibly, the gun and suppressor kept working, actually sounding pretty good, even though we were starting to blow flames out of the end cap. We had no malfunctions until... Might be ammo. Really shitty batch of wolf ammo. You know, that's what happens when you get the cheap stuff. So after the 700 or 800 round mark, we started getting light primer strikes on wolf. We weren't sure if the problem was with the cheap ammo or if it was an issue with the gun. Then we started to get more light strikes with both federal and wolf. That's when my buddy, Brian Marshall of the Star Training Academy asked me if I remembered to drop the correct Mark 18 heavy buffer in the buffer tube. Of course I did. We're running a Colt M16 lower on here, non-transferable, of course, government property. So that means it had a shitty old spring and a regular buffer in it. So we were having some light primer strikes, plus we're shooting Wolf ammo, not really known as being the most reliable. We just put the Daniel Defense spring and buffer in here. So it's an H1 buffer. That seems to have fixed the issue, but let's double check. Yeah, so I would say so. I, th I think the issue has been fully resolved. Now with the H buffer and the proper spring. I, I totally forgot. And why does that matter? Without getting too involved into a discussion about dwell time and gas tube length, the Mark 18 typically runs a heavier buffer than the standard 14 or 16 inch M4s. And I completely forgot to install the Mark 18 heavy buffer on the M4 lower we were using. We swapped it out put the H buffer in, and not only did the gun start running 100% again, but the recoil was lighter and the ejection pattern became more consistent as well. Lookers on, passerby, and shooters alike were all amazed at how well this gun was running, having no malfunctions other than the ones caused by me being an idiot. I mean, it's still running. It still shoots like it just got out of the box. We started to run out of ammo. The Mark 18 wasn't giving up, so we decided to up the ante a little bit, have some fun with it, see if we could make it fail. We completely buried it in sand, which some say is a weak point for the M4, but I picked it up, 
rack the charging handle off to the races with no malfunctions. We even tossed it around the range a little bit to see if we could induce any failures or breakages from what would be a, a pretty unreasonable amount of abuse and still nothing, the gun ran just fine. Ready, one more? can't believe that. I mean, this thing's been running. We've treated it like shit all day today. Um, it smells like ass, to be perfectly honest. So I've been really impressed with this combo all day today. Right before we walked off the range, I did choke slam this Mark 18 into the sand. So when I go to charge it, the top round took a bunch of sand in with it. I had to mortar it to clear the chamber, racked it a few times, Got one chambered and we were back in business for the last few mags of the day. Yep. Oh, dude, we have got this thing fucked up now. <laughs> it actually, it charged. All right, here we go. There we go, just needed a... In summary, we ran anywhere between 1,200 and 1,500 rounds through a Daniel Defense Mark 18 upper, Colt lower, with the Huxworks Flow 556K suppressor installed, full auto, virtually nonstop, and the only failures we had were light primer strikes when I forgot to replace the buffer, so that was on me, and then the one time where I slammed the gun into the sand with an open dust cover face down. Frankly, I was really impressed with the results, and I'm not sure that civilian LARPers like us or even special operators need something more reliable than that. And my conclusion seems to jibe with the consensus about the M4 and the Mark 18 out there. If you remember the 2007 Aberdeen dust test that I said it above, well, yeah, the M4 did have more malfunctions than the FN SCAR, the HK XM8, or 416. It was still less than 1.5% of the time, and that's just a plain Jane mil-spec M4, not the DD Mark 18, which I would assume would fare better. In that theme, in 2013, Naval Surface Warfare Center Crane Division, think of this as like the Navy SEAL laboratory, they released an extremely detailed study and found that firing the Mark 18 suppressed and unsuppressed alternating led to a 0.65% failure rate in guns using PMAGs after 12,600 rounds. Funny enough, standard aluminum GI mags were half as reliable as PMAGs. To be fair, the guns were lubed every 600 rounds and cleaned every 1,200 rounds, so that should be considered, obviously. But tell me, what do you think? Bear in mind that in 2006, the Center for Naval Analyses, CNA, they polled over 2,000 operators who used the M4 in combat in the Middle East, and 89% of them said they were satisfied with the M4's performance. So before you pop off in the comments from your Xbox controller, Remember that regardless of what all the studies say, all the testing says, the guys who actually used the M4 in the field had overwhelmingly favorable impressions. But go ahead and tell me what you think in the comments. Guys, we don't take money in exchange for favorable reviews. Please think about supporting us on Utreon, Patreon, Subscribestar, whatever. Check the link below. We give away free guns, we give away free swag, we give away gear to say thank you, so please consider supporting us, helping us out a little bit. Thank you as usual to Ventura Munitions for sending us the ammo we used in this test. And if you wanna pick up some Daniel Defense, make sure to check out our sponsors at Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. But thanks again for watching, take care.